On today's JMO with Josh and Joe, we have the Denver Nuggets NBA champions. Congratulations. Congratulations. Well done. First title in their franchise history. We break down games three, four, and five. Uh, there's a little, <laughs> there's some other drama in the NBA that we get to. It's interesting, to mm-hmm. say the least. Um, then we move on to our OT dish on this Dayton sports history. We have. We have a really good one, actually. We it would it's uh, we break it down. I it was a, a story I had to look into. Yep. Um, also, also pretty dark. Also, yeah. A little, this OT dish is a little dark. It's a little dark. It's a little dark. Um. Then we move on to college baseball. One of the most electric fucking sports in 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 America right now. Low key, low key. One of the most electric. Under the radar electric. Uh, we talk a little bit about that. Then we get into golf. Throw some little golf. Mm-hmm. Fucking dramatic ass ending. It's, it's it was a good weekend in sports. It was good it was. weekend in sports. We talk about a little golf, and we move on to tennis. We have some records being broken in tennis. Great fucking post match speeches. Awesome. Then we move on. We do a little talking soccer. Hey, eh? talking soccer. We have the UEFA Championship game. Um, a little melodramatic, but we talk about it. We do a little other um, a little other MLS. MLS. Talking to yeah, there's yep. uh, big news. Big news coming for the for uh, Major League Soccer here. Things got a little messy. Little <laughs> nice. I see what you did there. Uh, then we go. Then we uh, end off with a little bit of NFL talk. We talk about the the new Cleveland Browns logo, and actually, kind of the spur of the moment, we talk a little <laughs> a little hockey. A, a little, little hockey. hockey. To finish it up. Finish it up. Let's rock and roll. To JMO, Josh and Joe. It is Tuesday, June thirteenth, and Joe, congratulations to the Denver Nuggets for winning early, so we can get to the John Morant news. <laughs> the real, me- the real news by the media. Yes, the real news according to Adam Silver. This is this is all we've been waiting to hear. We, 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 we okay. I'll, 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 let's give Denver Nuggets their credit. Yeah, they won the NBA Finals. They are champions for the first time in franchise history. Franchise history, yeah. Yep. Nikola Jokic won the MVP. Dude, he's the most boring MVP final or finals MVP winner of all time. Did you see his uh, his his celebrations? Oh yeah, the, there was none. Exactly. <laughs> he he barely even shook the champagne. No. He was just like holding a Mick Ultra. No. Yeah. Right. <laughs> just the guy standing in the corner at all the parties. You know. It's a weird guy like thinking like if only these people knew. Blah blah blah. Yeah, that was the he. That's that's Jokic. He just wanted to go home and Facetime his horses. That was it. That was it. I mean, KD had that tweet, but Jokic actually did play it out. What what was uh? Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Remember he was um, like he was like yeah you know Nikola Nikola uh, Jokic is all about work. Yes. You know he just does his business. He goes back home, Facetimes his horses, and that's done. And he. It was put on full display. He's a family man. He's a, he's honestly, if he wasn't so tall and fucking good at basketball, he would be in Serbia just living on a ranch training horses. That's, yes. He's a simple kind of man. He's yep. the Leonard Skinner of of the NBA. Um, he, I, I love how everyone loves to remind us that he was drafted during a Taco Bell commercial. Mm-hmm. It, that was great. And honestly, I look back at it. We need to bring back the quesarito. Yeah, that that actually did, you know, give us a very important reminder of, you know, what we are truly missing. It's a burrito in a in a case in a, in a quesadilla. Mm-hmm. Like what? Yes. What? Why? Why did we stray from this? Is that that is like the definition of America taking Mexican things? If the marketing team for Taco Bell is smart, which they typically are, they do. They, they actually do have a good marketing team. They do good. They would capitalize on this yes. right now. Yes. And I mean, honestly, look, give maybe give uh, Jokic a sponsor deal with it. Maybe. You know? Oh yeah, they, he could be like, um, step aside, Pete Davidson. I'm the new face of Taco Bell. Yes. Because for some reason they they got Pete Davidson to do. Well, Pete Davidson's breakfast. He's gonna be dinner. Okay. All right. Yeah. It, it still didn't make any sense because Pete Davidson's he's he's skinny. Yeah, he's skinny. Also, I don't really think he actually wakes. This is a type of person who wakes up for breakfast. No, I, he wakes. He seems like the type of person that wakes up at eleven thirty. Yes, and, on a daily basis. On a daily basis, right? Exactly. 
I, that's just, he looks like that type of guy. Yeah. He may, I mean, he might surprise me. I'm not saying that's how he is, but, no, no, you know, he, just the, off no, the appearance. We figured it out. I mean, he also is, you know, his job is Saturday night live, so not Saturday morning. Right. There's, so. I mean, it, it pretty much spells it out, right? Exactly. Yeah. It's good. Okay. Um. All right. So, we let's give let's give the Denver Nuggets its due. Congratulations. They won the fucking NBA Finals. They're the champions. Stan Kroenke is probably the best owner in recent years. Mm-hmm. He's he. I mean, he what? He won Rams. He he's won the fucking mammoths. The Vegas. Wait, really? The it was yeah. Denver Nuggets and what was it? There was another one. And the Rams. No, he. I, I said the Rams. He had four. He had four professional teams that um, that won won championships. So good for them. Um, Laying the blueprint down for owner. So yes, goat for, goat owner. Go owner. He's a dynasty owner. Okay. Dynasty owner, if you will. Um, let's see. Let, let, all right. So we gotta. We'll, we'll recap games three, four, and five. Honestly, games three and four, they were kind of the same thing. They were exactly the same thing. They, it was <laughs> like, if you look at it, like the first, first and the fourth quarter were very close, mm-hmm. and then the second and third quarters were just dominated by the the Denver Nuggets. Yeah. They were the exact same, exact same game. Yeah. It was pretty wild. I um, they, they were and they were both like relatively close losses. Like the I think game three, game four was a fifteen. No, game three was a fifteen point loss, and then game four was a thirteen point loss. Uh, I want to say it might have been even a little closer than that, but I'll no, oh no, no, no. I know th- it was thirteen and fifteen. I just can't remember which one was which. I'm pretty sure game three was fifteen and game four was thirteen. So, um. I think the best part of both of those games was McGregor in Game Four just sending to the mascot to ER to the ER. Was that the best part? That was my favorite part. <laughs> that was a cheap shot he had. I no, mean, oh no, it was not. The mascot squared up. The ma- I'm on McGregor's side. On no, this. I'm not saying the first shot he took. I'm talking about the one when he was on the ground. He's in the UFC, Joe. That is what they do. I mean, when they go to the ground, they they fight until someone pulls them off. It, that is programmed in Conor McGregor's brain. So, bad refing. Bad refing. Bad refing. Okay. Bad refing cuz the the guy squared the 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 mascot squared up. And when you square up to a UFC fighter, mm-hmm. it's not over until you tap out or the ref fucking pulls you away. Yeah, yeah. I guess it's it's a little different on boxing. Yeah, you know. No, they will hit you while you're down. While you're down. Yes, yep. that is the mentality of the USC fighters. So, I'm with Conor McGregor on this one. You square up to me, I'm gonna punch you until your lights are out. Yeah, I mean, I I, I thought the first one was fine. I just thought he knocked him out, and then it was a little bit of a cheap shot on the ground. But... No, no, that that was a finish shot, finisher. Okay. Um, he, that was a, the, his first punch was of like a. Perfect left hook. It's just so it's just like a real him. Mortal Kombat, you know. Finish him. Finish him. Yeah. No, that was that, that. That was honestly my favorite part of both of those games. But yeah, it was just like it. It, it was m- more of a, a testament to just how like deep the Denver Nuggets were. Mm-hmm. Like if, if you you can stop Jokic or you can let Jokic do his thing, it doesn't matter which one. They're gonna have people like Aaron Gordon, Bruce Brown. They're gonna have people like Contavious Colwell Pope. They're gonna have like Jamal Murray. Jamal Murray had great games. Like it, yep. it was. It doesn't matter. You can pick your poison. It, it it'll. I mean, throw in Christian Brown. Like yes, exactly. Um, you mean Bruce Brown? No, Christian. And Brown. Christian Brown. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um, no. Let's get to the, let's get to game five. Game five, you you could see that like Jimmy Jimmy Butler was was moving slow. He's 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 old. I mean we we already talked about it. He's he's getting old. You needed Jimmy Butler to come out firing. You needed him to to like rally the troops, if you will. Eight points in the first three quarters. This isn't going to cut it. No, no, no. You 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 have to be the one that sets the tone for the game, and he just didn't. And I think it's just because he's tired. He's just tired. His coffee isn't enough. He needs to go to like some form of like cocaine or something. Okay, that's that's interesting. I I was thinking maybe it was just the mom, mamba mentality. He wasn't really believing in it as much. But we'll go cocaine. We'll go drugs. I don't think the mamba mentality is something you believe in. I think it's something you you have. But cocaine is something you can get. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's true. That's very true. Uh, I know a guy. But I also. Jimmy Butler, 
kind of was notorious during this entire series of driving it in the lane and then dishing it out just right at the very it. right at the very end. Just passing it for no reason. Like I I feel like he could have gotten Jokic in a lot more foul trouble a couple of more times or Aaron Gordon in foul trouble by just taking it up, putting a body to him and like at least trying to finish at the rim. Now, like um Jokic did get in foul trouble in game 4. I have to I have to they they defied all odds in game 4. Mm-hmm. The the Denver Nuggets did because they had Scott Foster they had like the what was it the phantom foul um against Jokic the fit, his yeah Jokic's fifth phantom foul he it, that which put him on the bench for in like he had, so they had nine minutes left in the fourth quarter in game four he went to the bench mm-hmm. and because with his fifth foul and he stayed on the bench for five minutes and when he got when he went on the bench they were up by I think ten and when he came off of the bench five minutes later. He would. They were up by nine, so like, you take Jokic, Jokic away, they still have other people that fucking do that do work. Oh yeah, great team, great yeah. team. So like, it you can get get them. They honestly, the Nuggets beat the refs. They beat the Miami mm-hmm. Heat, and I I think they beat a little bit of Vegas. They like, beat Vegas. They beat a little bit of Vegas. Credit to Michael Malone and and Jokic and Jamal Murray and that entire team. They beat. If you can beat Vegas and the fucking refs and the Miami Heat. So how do they beat Vegas? Because Vegas pulls all the strings. So Vegas, because I was thinking Vegas wanted them to lose this game. Because I think Mm-mm. if I... I'm talking about game four. Game four? Oh, yes. Okay, game four. Yes, they wanted they wanted the, the Denver Nuggets to lose game four for sure. I thought they wanted them to lose game five well, too. Well, they, they probably did. That's why I'm saying like, I think that the, it was a, a futile effort. In mm-hmm. game five, but I think they really pressed it in game four. They wanted Drake's money. Yes, they did. Oh, they they wanted it so bad. Yep. Um, and you could kind of see that evident. I don't know if you saw in the last on the game five where Butler had that foul. Yes, got yes. that foul, and it was, oh, that phantom foul. That was mm-hmm. another one. Yeah, that would that's that's that was. If, if Miami had won that game, that would have been one of the more controversial calls. Oh, yeah. in NBA Finals history. Yep, yep. that was not a foul. Yeah. That was so bad. I mean, honestly, you just question. You're like, what can Aaron Gordon do? I mean, in that case, and right, do do you just not want him to exist? Yeah, just like teleport somewhere. That's when I thought because the game was still relatively close at that point. That's when I thought I was like, up. Oh, they Vegas wants them to win this, but uh, Miami didn't want to win. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. I um, they just the lack of talent in. How old they are? Bam Adebayo played out of his mind. He did. He, he was awesome. He, he did. It was like he was trying to will them to win, but he's just not Jimmy Butler, you yeah. know. It's, and they needed to... they needed a hero. Yes, they needed a hero in this game. Okay. In, in speaking of which, okay, I don't want to like, I don't want to call out Eric Spolstra or anything because like, he's a genius coach. He's he's legend. Blah blah blah. But. Come on, the last possession of Game Five, they were like they have what twenty something seconds, twenty like twenty two, twenty three seconds left. You have one timeout. Set up a play, set up a shot, and I'm not talking about setting up a shot for for Jimmy Butler because everyone and their grandmother thinks that Jimmy Butler is going to take that shot, which he did. Mm-hmm. He did in the game, and he everybody thinks that that Jimmy Butler is going to take that shot. No, you set up, you you call a timeout, you set up a play for Duncan Robinson. Ooh. You set up a play for Duncan Robinson, but make it look like you're trying to go to Jimmy Butler. Now, listen, all eyes are on Jimmy Butler, but if you look at the stats, listen, Duncan Robinson for the finals shot 43%. Up until that point of the game, he shot 43% from from three-point. Okay. Which, as you know, you and I know, that is a great percentage from from, uh, from three-point. He was from three-point. He was 9 of 21 in this series. Throw him the ball. Yeah. Why would you not set up a play for Duncan Robinson? He is on fire. Like, I understand you want to go with your guy, Jimmy Butler, but he's old, he's slow, and everybody's going to be on him. Everybody's going to be thinking he's going to take the shot. Honestly, it almost felt like that was the time to maybe have a time where Jimmy Butler would drive in. That way he has the option if the the lane's open, and then you just play the foul game again. Or you dish it out to Duncan Robinson. And for an open three, which you know everybody's crashing onto the board, somebody should be open on the um, on the outside. Exactly. I, no, you're absolutely right. And and they 
they did have a timeout, so they should have taken it to set up something. It could have been that. It could have been anything. Like, you, I mean, I, again, it was a real Joe Missoula move there. I, I, I don't want to call <laughs> out Eric Spolstra. I really don't want to, but, like, come on, man. Like, you, the, this is – everything's on the line. You, yep. you got everything to lose here. Like, call a timeout and fucking – just set up a play. Set mm-hmm. up a play. Um, I do want to know. I do. I do want to make a note that uh, Nikola Jokic in the post. It's like a mix of Shaq and Tim Duncan almost. It is. It's really like like he he can he can bully you. He can pass it around. He can throw it off the backboard. He can do everything. It's yep. it's really like a cheat code in NBA. You can't defend it. So he's he's got like an overpowering presence like Shaq does, but he also plays with a lot of fundamentals like Tim Duncan does. And finesse. And finesse. Yes. Tim Duncan was was oh, he was so fucking good. Um but yeah, I just uh, it was cool. It was cool. Hey, the Denver fucking fans were insane. They yep. they they were partying like Philly in the sense that they didn't destroy their town, but they used their town as props. Did you see the fan that was doing pull-ups from the um the stoplight post? I didn't see that. Okay, so so there was a stoplight post. You know how the the pers- the posts go vertical and then they go horizontal to show the, the street lights? Yep. So on the horizontal part, like way far away from the the vertical part, this guy he was just shown doing pull ups. Okay. And then dropped like twenty five, thirty feet into a crowd that caught him. Okay, it so was, was so impressive. Denver fans are much more active than Philadelphia fans. Yes, yes. Philadelphia fans just want to destroy. Denver fans actually work out. Okay, so they were the workout buffs. Philadelphia are just pissed off. Yeah, they're they're very angry. They're just mad. Right, yeah. They're always mad. Which, I mean, I, I don't blame them. They should be mad. Fuck Philly. Fuck Philly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of partying, uh, did you see Aaron Gordon in the streets? Yeah, he's, he's having himself a time. Yeah, yeah. That, I mean, that... Bull move there, because that's pretty fucking dangerous, but um, I loved it. He was fucking ramping up the crowd. Like he, I don't think people knew that he was going to co- come outside, because like the video I saw was like him followed by like a little group, and then just swarms of people came around him. I feel like that's just the product of being in Orlando for so long, and just being on those <laughs> shitty teams that he's just letting loose now. He is, he is. I can't wait to see him on the parade. Yes, yes. He's gonna. He, he's he's a man of the people. He is a man of the people. He's a man of the people. I'll forgive him that he went to Ohio State, but he he uh, he he's good. He's good. He's a he's a very big guy. Mm-hmm. Very very large human being, and his face looks like he's large. Yeah, yeah. You know, he's got that large face. Um. Yeah. Uh. Do you have anything else on the NBA Finals? Like, it was just it was just a dominant performance by by Denver Nuggets. They 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 were the clearly the best team this year. They were clearly the best team in the playoffs. Nikola Jokic was clearly the best player in the playoffs. Like, did you see he led the entire um, league in points, rebounds, and assists? Yep, like for totals. the entire playoffs. Totals. Was, no, no one has ever done that. Six hundred points, two hundred and sixty nine rebounds, one hundred and ninety assists. That's that's all first for a, a complete playoff. That's that's wild. That yeah. that's unfathomable. Like I can't I can't like it, it's hard to process in my brain. When you start beating records that were set by, you know, Magic Johnson, Wilt Chamberlain. Kareem uh, Abdul Jabbar. Yeah, Bill Russell. Like when you start like breaking those type of records, especially like when the excuse was it was like, oh, this person made those records because it was back, it was dated, it's back in time. Like the, you know, they didn't have the level of talent. When you break those records, that's when you know you're good. And you're going up against like the best of the best because like he went up. Uh, obviously, LeBron's not in his prime, but they had Anthony Davis. They had a great fucking team. They went up against the entire West. The West was fucking stacked. Mm-hmm. They were, the West was stacked. They they beat all the teams that beat all the best teams. Yeah, yeah. No, it was all around great performance. Um, yeah, no, it's it's definitely a good one. I you know what? I'm I'm trying to figure out though. Is like Jokic like just he's motivated for more, or is he just like he's just like eh? See, I I think he's I. Th- I'm with you. I think he just kind of like wants everything to end so he can get back to his horses now. He's well, he did everything. say in the uh, the post game press conference, he's like, "The job is done. We can go home now." I he think just, he just wants to go home. He just wants to go home. He's like he's like Forrest Gump, like running off across the America. Uh, America, you know, everybody's thinking this is so impressive and everything, and he just gets done, and he's like, 
I think I'll go home now. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. I think he's he's a family man. Yeah. I mean, like if you saw most of his pictures were of him with his kid, with his fa- with his brother, his ginormous brothers. He likes to win, but he doesn't love winning. Yes. Okay. That. Oh, that's good. He that's likes good to win, but not he doesn't love winning. He loves his horses. He loves his horses. Which honestly, if you know Denver Nuggets were thinking straight, just bring his horses for the parade. Just buy him a ranch. Everything has to be towed by horses. Everything towed by horses. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, then he'll join and have a great time in the parade. Yeah. Buy him a ranch in Colorado. Come on, there's plenty of fucking, there's plenty of fields there. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They can um, make it work. So, yeah. Uh, let's see. Anything else on the, on, on the finals? Believe it or not, as much as the media did not portray it, this was actually the most watched final in, finals in the last five years. Really? Yep. In the last five years. Okay, so we had over the, the Milwaukee Bucks, the Lakers, the... Raptors last year, the Warriors, mm-hmm. and then what, 2018? What was that? Probably the Warriors again. Warriors. Oh, yeah, yeah. 2017, 2018. Really? So this was the, the most watched finals. Interesting. I wonder. You wouldn't have thought of that by the media. No, but. no, no, no. Is it? Is it? Well, because I feel like the media wanted the Boston Celtics versus the Los Angeles Lakers. Oh, absolutely. Maybe I mean like I mean it's West Coast versus East Coast. I think I think that's the the blueprint for for ratings. Just West Coast versus East Coast. This is the new Civil War. It's the sports version of the Civil War. You know how like back in the eighteen hundreds it was North versus South. It's just East versus West now. It's East versus West yeah. now. Okay. That's that's that that's how you get ratings. Just get someone from the West. I don't care if it's Arizona. I don't care if it's Washington. Just get someone from the West, and then I don't care if it's someone in Florida, someone in fucking South Carolina or New York. Get someone from the East. Okay. East-West so, is a new Civil War. New Civil War. All right, cool. I love it. Um, Let's see. Let's let's get to some other NBA uh, drama. Because, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, well, actually, that's just one other NBA drama. Um, So Zion Williamson has been in the news recently, and um, <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why he's been in the news. I, I, I mean, I know why, but I don't know. I don't understand why this is news that we have to talk about. So the story is Zion Williamson, I guess, was dating a former porn star or banging a frame, former porn star mm-hmm. for a while who was allegedly helping him get in shape and get back to normal and, you know, do get back to Zion things. And then two weeks ago, he came out with a picture of – him and his now girlfriend, who is pregnant with their child. A pregnancy announcement. Yeah, it was a pregnancy announcement. Well, this, um, this, we'll call her a former girlfriend. Mm-hmm. Mariah Mills. Mariah Mills. Um, if you want to go look her up, she's got a, you know, if you're horny. But Mariah Mills went out and posted multiple tweets and still continues to this day to post multiple tweets about how Zion was a piece of shit and was banging other girls while he was banging her. Yeah, she was she was big bad. Big mad. Big, big bad. mad off the announcement. Oh yeah, and she she continues. But my my question is like if like did you really really think an NBA star was was only banging you? Only banging you. That's it. The, the the NBA star was not cheating on you at all. Did you really think that? Like, if you really, really put your brain to it and, like, think about it, come on. You just – your pride was hurt. That's what it is. So, basically, the storyline is what I'm getting is athlete bangs multiple people. Shocker. Yeah, shocker. Real, wow. real big shocker. Wow. Oh I'm, man, tell me more. Tell me more. <laughs> I I don't know if this maybe this maybe was a kind of a PR stunt type of thing from her because I mean she is getting a lot of PR right now. So like it, it's good on good good for her. Like well from from a source from a friend of mine, she went from the number one hundred seventy third uh porn star on Pornhub to the number seven. Wow. Yeah. So. And she and she retired. She allegedly she retired from porn uh, four years ago. Yeah, but you know, from a friend, that's uh, that's uh, the moving move up in the uh, statistics is, right now. Is the quotation on around friends? Is that does that mean you? 
It it's from a friend. It, Just okay. trust me. Okay. It's it's from a f- <laughs> source. Trust me. Oh, okay. It's not you. Though. No, it's no. not you. No, it's it's from a friend. Okay, for on on the record, let the record know that this is not from Joe. No. It's from an outside source. It's from an outside source. Joe is not a big porn guy. No, no, no. That see, I wouldn't know, you know, where to get that information from. Oh, but, okay. But yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. But actually, on the uh, for real, a lot of these girls now too are trying to extract NDAs. So, like, as far as I don't, we, that's another theory that was floating around there. Whether, whereas she was trying to get like a NDA extract from her, so basically a contract, a non-disclosure uh, oh, agreement where yeah, they yeah, can yeah. they can. Well, get, that that's always that's always going to be a thing. You get paid out, so yeah. That's, so that's basically. Kind I don't of, know. I I feel like she's been she's made a lot of money and she just keeps going. She's she she's like she's basically body weight shaming him now. Like he's she he, she's. Did you see some of the tweets? Mm-hmm. Like she's just like talking about how like he was just sweaty and fat and had like soda cans in his in all over his his bathroom and shit. Yeah. Like he's she's fat shaming him. She is. She is. Which so. I guess. <laughs> People can be petty. People can be petty, man. I got. Uh, I, got I see that. I just my my uh, my brain always reverts back to like you're you're really surprised that uh, NBA star as big as and as rich as Zion was was screwing around with other people. Like you really surprised? Come on, come she, on. Just big, <laughs> like, big mad that she figured out she was a side piece. Yeah, yeah. It was, this is one of those things. You just you, you got your pride hurt. Move on. Move on. Yep. All right. Anyways, you got anything else on the NBA? Uh, that's about it. Okay. Let's get to OT Dish. Um, on this day in sports history, how many do you have? Uh, I've got two. You got two? Okay. I got I got two as well. Um, I'll start. This is this, this first one's a big one. On this day in 1955, Mercedes racing car kills 83 people at Le Mans, France. Okay. So this is this is. This is one I had to take a look at. Okay. This was a race um, in Le Mans, France. It's called the 1955 Le Mans Disaster. It killed 83 people. A race car killed 83 people, injured at least 120. Okay. So what? It ran off the track? Okay. So like they were. It, it was. I had to look. I, I went and looked this up. I went into detail. It's pretty interesting. Of course. Actually. Yeah. Um. So like they were racing, and one of the cars in front of the two that got in a collision, the car in front was heading into a pit stop. And I guess they didn't realize they were heading into a pit stop. So the two cars behind them want the one in front of the car, the third. So let's call the pit stop guy one. Then then the two cars, two and three. Number two veered off to the left, almost in hit number three, essentially hit number three, who bounced off the wall and went back Ramped on, used basically used the uh, car number two as a ramp. It hit the, the 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 wheel or the tire, and ramped off of the car, and basically just sailed, sailed in the air and rolled for Dukes of Hazard style. Dude, I'm talking Dukes of Hazard style. But then, but they didn't land on the wheels. Um, so basically, it was it it barrel rolled for eighty meters. Barrel roll for eighty meters, and then hitting an embankment, hit one, hit an embankment, and the force sent basically the heaviest parts of the car sailing into the stands. Ooh. So like I'm talking like the engine block, the radiator, like the the front suspension, and just literally sent it flying. And they said it hurled straight into the crowd for a hundred meters. Ooh. So like the car went eighty meters, and then sent everything else. Just hurling a hundred meters. They okay. So they, this is this is a quote I I uh, I found. It literally said that it was decapitating tightly jammed spectators like a guillotine. Ooh. Like I'm talking these the, the, this engine block was just taking off people's heads. Just imagine if they had all the video cameras that they have nowadays for that. That that would be a horror sight to see. It would be terrible, but here and here's the craziest part. Here's the craziest part. So, like, all right, uh, 
after this, after the fact, I, I just wanted to note uh, that after the fact, um, it was the deadliest crash ever. They still finished the race, by the way. But this Mercedes Benz withdrew from racing, all racing until 1989. Wow. And so, wait, that was 34 years? Yes, 1955 to 19. 19- wow. Quick math. Yeah, maybe. Holy shit. I don't know. Good for you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the entire country of Switzerland okay. withdrew from racing until March of this year. Of this year? March of 2023. Wow. Yeah. They withdrew from all racing until March of this year. Now, <laughs> so they, they like I said, they started the race normally. The crash happened. Everyone fucking died. And they ended, they ended up keep continuing the race and ended it with champagne and celebration. Wow. Yeah. And we had a guy, DeMar Hamlin, last year, stopped an entire football game. Didn't even die. Uh, yeah. I mean, died for a second and then came back. Well, yeah. Okay. Didn't even die permanently. I'm just saying times times have changed. Times have changed. So they were at the um, – they were asked – why the race was not stopped. It was supposed to be red flagged. The um the explanations were that then this, this this first one's kind of understandable. That if the huge crowd of spectators had tried to leave in mass, they they would have choked the main roads around severely impeding access for medical and emergency crews trying to save the injured. Which that makes sense. Now this is this is. This I feel is, like that's a Captain Hindsight excuse. It is a Captain Hindsight excuse for sure. That, yeah. Well done. Well done. Um, the next one was this is where the money comes in. That firms participating in the race could have sued the race organization organization organizers for huge sums of money. <laughs> that the. All right. That hang on. Quote the rough law of sports. Of the sport dictates that the race shall go on. End quote. That was a that was a direct quote. Um, and the last is that he did not, in fact, have the authority that the guy who should have called the race did not, in fact, have the authority to stop the race at all. That the um, Pierre Trio. I think that's his name, was the only individual empowered to do so as France's on-site representative to the Ministry of the Interior. So the guy that they apparently that they asked to stop the race is putting the blame on somebody else. How can they put all that power in one man? That's, uh, that's what I'm, I'm – Like there's one man that has the authority well, to okay, stop this, the race? This was also in 1955, so it wasn't like they had cameras. It wasn't like they could call up New York and be like, hey – um, what should we do here? You know, it wasn't like they had like committees on hand to 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 decide on these things, like the Demar Hamlin situation. Mm-hmm. You know, so that I, that was just that was crazy to me. It was eighty three people, one hundred and twenty were injured. That is crazy. Wow. So yeah, there you go. All right. Well, I'm not going to top that by any stretch. <laughs> I should have saved that for the last. <laughs> <laughs> but in 2012, uh, 2012, San Francisco Giants, Matt Cain pitches first perfect game in franchise history against the Houston Astros. I'm so glad you picked that one. Yeah. I was almost going to pick that one because I had Matt Cain on my fantasy baseball team back in 2012 when he did that. So nice. I, I, re- I remember that game very, very well. It was It was wild. Yeah. Wild, and it wasn't like Matt Cain was even doing that well. He wasn't even like one of the top like five uh, pitchers in that that year. He was just he just out of nowhere just fucking just, just had a day. Had a day. Had himself a day. <laughs> had maybe, himself a day. Maybe he took some some acid like that that one pitcher that pitched a, pitch, a perfect game in the eighties. Ooh, what, oh, what was his name? Fuck, I can't remember his name. Um. Yeah, no, it was a pitcher in the in the eighties or nineties that took acid and didn't know he was going to be pitching and pitched a perfect game on acid. And I feel like they weren't as hypersensitive as they are nowadays with drug tests. You know, anytime there's like an Instagram video or something, you know, you get automatically random automatic. drug drug tests. Oh, automatic. I mean, I know it's it's 2012 is not too too far away, but still, ten years ago, I don't think they were doing that. I mean, if you did it consecutively, then they were like, oh, okay, we we're, we're gonna I, check this guy. I was start, I'm starting to pick up on on a trend. If like your neck size grows like three inches in in one year, yeah. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, so basically, he probably did. He probably did just take some acid and yeah. did the acid trick. The acid trick. Nice. Um, let's see. In 1991, Spectator is killed by lightning at U.S. Open golf tournament. This is probably the guy. This is the, probably the reason that we have such fucking crazy ass lightning delays. So, yeah, but I'm also noticing that you both of your OT dishes is just people dying. Dark. At Spart- uh Yeah, you went dark on went this one. Real dark on this one. Wow. Yeah. I, uh,. I don't know what got into me. I, there wasn't even a full moon. There was. It's uh. It's it's not Friday the thirteenth. It is the thirteenth, but it's not Friday the thirteenth. I don't know. I just went real dark. I like. I got really annoyed by that 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 one. Nineteen ninety one. The spectator killed by lightning. Yeah, that that one annoyed me. It's like, oh, this guy died. Let's he, put it on. He fucked me up. He he fucked it up for every everyone else now. So now we have lightning delays for like thirty fucking minutes for no reason. Even though the lightning's like you know twenty miles out. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, we saw it. Uh, whatever, dude. Um, all right, what's your next one? All right. And in 2019, this kind of goes along with the theme of the Denver Nuggets winning their first franchise uh, NBA final. The Toronto Raptors won their first franchise That title. was their first one? That was their first one in franchise history against the Warriors. They never, they didn't win one with, in like the Vince Carter days? Nope. Interesting. Nope. I so. forgot about that. Okay, nice. And, and in the MVP, uh, Kawhi Leonard. Yep. Yeah. The robot. The robot. Yeah. Well, he had that um, that insane fucking shot. Well, that was against the Phil uh, the, the, 76ers. Right. That was the... in the uh, Eastern Conference Finals. Yes. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was that same year, though. Yeah. They were pretty destined. crazy. They were destined. Destined. Um. All right. Let's get to some college baseball, dude. All right. So, like, college baseball is is like under the radar fucking awesome yes it is electric because you can it's it's almost like the nba nowadays where like you know the nba you get a 12 14 point lead that doesn't mean shit Mm -hmm. it doesn't mean anything they can come back in like next five minutes they can go on a 12 and 2 run boom you got a game one of the best things for base college baseball was that they brought back the aluminum bath Yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Because you got to have some scoring. I look. I'm. I'm you know. I, I. I like some good pitching, but in the end of the day, fans want to see some scoring. That's why people want the want steroids back in the uh, MLB. Yeah, they yeah. want to. They want to see some scoring. Like at some point, it, it's you know what? There's going to be low scoring games, and they're going to be those are going to be good games too. But I every single game being like a low scoring game. If it was a fast paced sport, kind of like a hockey. You could get by with it. Yes, yes. Your atten- your, there's a uh, you know a lot to attend uh, as far as for your attention to. Um, you, you, there's a lot going on. There, no, there's a lot going on in sport. It's the same with soccer. Soccer is just a little slower than hockey. Hockey is just better soccer, in, in my opinion. Yeah. Like there's there's a lot. It's a low scoring game, but there's so much more going on. It within it's a game within the game. Mm-hmm. You know, there's so much more going on that you that that like with football and like basketball. You need more scoring. You do need more, some more scoring. More scoring is better for the game. Yeah. Whereas with like like like, like you said with baseball with like um with hockey with soccer. Well, I'm sorry, not baseball, but with hockey with soccer, there's more going on. Baseball, you kind of need you you need the scoring. Yeah, there's too many breaks going on for it to be like an entertaining game for one zero. Correct, and that's where college baseball comes in because you can be a team can be down by seven runs in the top of the eighth inning. And the game's not over. Mm-hmm. Game's not over at all because yeah. them motherfuckers they will they will battle back. It means it means so much to them. Yeah, and I mean you can still highlight good pitching too. Like so, good pitchers will go all the way through. But at the same time, sometimes when if they get high in the pitch count and they have a couple like they have a reliever come in for an inning or two, that's the prime time that you can actually kind of capitalize and be able to either catch up or you know win the game. Exactly. Exactly. And um, it's just it. And there's like just different things that can happen. Like a possum can run onto the field, yep. and that'll help rally your team. Yep. A rally squirrel it doesn't matter. You put the rally cap on. Yeah, we like, actually had some pretty crazy games too that happened this um, during the super regionals. Right. Oh yeah. Well, no, we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to that. I just wanted to talk about how awesome college baseball is first. Yep. Um. First, I want to get to let's the the college world series is set. College, college world, world series, series is set. So they have. It'll be LSU versus Tennessee, Stanford versus Wake Forest, um, Oral Roberts versus TCU, and Florida versus Virginia. 
That's the first round. Now, how, where it goes from there, we don't know because you have loser, losers brackets, winners brackets. That's the beauty of college baseball. Like, I was almost thinking, I was like, dude, we could have a March Madness version of college baseball. And I thought about it. I don't. I don't want that. I like the double elimination. I like that your team has a chance, even if they lose the first round. Like, well, they give you they give you like that for two options. So you got the you got the first first round, the regionals. You got the regionals where you know, hey, you get a, you get a second chance. Yes, you do. And then you got the super regionals. It goes to uh, best two out of three. Yep. So you got another ch- second chance, and then. And then you go back to the bracket round robin yep. in the co- first for the first co- uh, round of the College World Series, and then you go back to the best two out of three for the College World Series championship game. Honestly, that it's it. I love it. It's uniform. It is. It is. It's, it very, it very, very, very well is. Um, they. I, I speaking. Well, let, let's let's get to the regionals. Let's 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 actually do it. Let's do it because uh, or the super regionals. I'm sorry. Um, the. There was a lot of weather delays. Yes. A lot of weather delays. That kind of sucked. But um, we'll start with – since we're big big LSU fans, let's just start with LSU. Um, Paul Skeens is the best best pitcher in the in college baseball. Like, not even – it's not even close. It's – yeah. It's not – I mean, he won the National Player of the Year award for a reason. Yeah. The only guy I'm thinking that might be close was is a Wake Forest guy. Yeah, he's really the I I don't remember his name. The Wake Forest Ace is is very very good. He is very good. Um I mean he's what is it? He's won every single game he's played and um I think he's pitched at least 6 innings every single game as well. He's just been on fire. And here's the thing, the ACC is actually really good in baseball. Yeah. Um they they're up there with like the, with the SEC. And honestly, I think Clemson should have beat Tennessee. Oh but yeah, Clemson definitely. should have came out of that regional, um, but Tennessee did. But Tennessee's just so hot and cold. They, yeah. they, nobody, oh. they're the wild card. They are the wild card. They're yeah. the wild card. Um, and Virginia, Virginia's in the College World Series. Like, you yep. know, So they like the ACC was really good. And honestly, if, if it had shaped up a little bit better, I think there could have been more than three SEC teams in the in the College World Series. But SEC is is by far the best fucking conference. Like they 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 just. Well, they got three teams in the uh, College World Series. Right. ACC has two. Pac-12 has one. Uh, Big 12 has one. TCU. And then Oral Roberts, wherever they come from. <laughs> I love how Oral <laughs> Roberts is in it. I, that's why I love college baseball, too. Like You have teams like Rice. Yep. Rice, that, that can be good. Uh, Cal State Fullerton. Yep. Cal State Fullerton. Uh, Coastal Carolina. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like They have these these random fucking teams that are just really good at baseball for some reason. Yeah. yeah and, you, honestly, a lot of them, like you said, you just never really heard of them in any other sport except for baseball. Except for baseball, yeah. And uh, look, Southern Miss had a great had had a great uh, great year this year. They they went to th- uh, the third game with against Tennessee. Mm-hmm. You know, like and who knows if they hadn't had the weather delay and had to you know play the double header. Yep. game who knows what would happen but um yeah the uh the first game LSU destroyed Kentucky it was it was beautiful they had Travinsky and Beloso had back-to-back homers twice in that game mm-hmm. Trey Morgan had had uh two homers yep like Dylan Cruz I think Dylan Cruz had a homer too I think like it was just it was just Boomsticks the yeah. entire time. It was beautiful. It was literally from the offensive side, just straight, straight sluggers, mm-hmm. like the entire time. And then from the defensive side, the pitching, Paul Skeens just did Paul Skeens stuff. He, that's that's all he does. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to note, I want to note is Wake Forest. They pummeled Alabama. Yes. It wasn't even close. I mean, the first game was kind of close. It was 5-4 uh, Wake Forest, which I thought they, oh, Alabama true, might true. be able to make a game of it. But Wake Forest put that down real quick. Mm-hmm. And they they didn't let off the gas. 22-6? to six, Yeah, 22 to the 5. 5, yeah. So, um, yeah. They're going to be really good. Florida's going to be really good. I think um, the – yeah. I think, I think the remaining couple of teams, Wake Forest, Florida – Virginia and LSU will be up there. I think Tennessee is going to fizzle out. I think Oral Roberts is just kind of like they're there. They're the third, third, fourth seed to ever make it to the College World Series. Good for them. And they had a walk-off home run, a walk-off game in game two to force a game three and then end up winning 11-6. to Oh, that's right. They came back against Oregon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was wild, man. Yeah. Well, Oregon should have won that game, too. And I don't know if you saw – so shout-out to uh, Quinn Matthews of Stanford. 
um, had 156 pitches in game in game oh, two uh, against Texas. 16 strikeouts. Just wow. Yeah. See, this is why I love college baseball, man. This is they 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 just want it more. It's it, it they just it it means more. Yeah, and it's just like the because the thing is, it's it's no rhyme or reason. It's not like Quinn Matthews. I mean, he's a great pitcher, he, but he wasn't like the top of the you know the NCAA like this year, but. He actually did pitch the most innings by far. He's pitched 120 innings, which is like I think there's only a few people that's gone over 100 this year. And 100, 120 pitches, 120 innings. Innings. Oh, th- for the the wow. entire season. Wow. Yeah. So apparently, elite status if you pitch 100 over 100 uh, innings in college baseball, elite status. But yeah, no. Um, but Quinn Matthews, I mean. It, it, you got you got to think. I mean, who else? Do, who else would they do that to? Like, except for some, you know, college age uh, kid with a, the adrenaline rolling and just like, hey, just keep me in, coach. It's like I'm, you, I'm just going to keep throwing. Yeah, you're young. You, yeah. you you'll recover. Yeah, yeah exactly. They, it's exactly what it is. 156 pitches. Yep. Jeez, that's crazy. And then the best part, the best game. That I saw, and I was I, I was fortunate enough to turn this on and watch the ending of it. But I don't know if you saw the Stanford Texas game game three. Um, I don't I I I think I might have caught highlights. So so Stanford Stanford comes back, um, makes it six six ball game. Oh yeah, I do remember this one. Yes, yes. And so they're in the ninth inning right now, two outs. Stanford, I don't know, I forgot the player's name. But he hits it, and it looks nice. I mean, he he drills it. He throws off the helmet. And next thing you know it, he sees the ball flying from infield. So if you watched it, it depends on where your angle was. The ball goes over to the fence, and it goes in front of the Pac-12 uh, logo. Right, it looked like a home run, right? And it looks like the ball comes over, the uh, goes in front of the logo, and it looks like it disappears. Right. It looks like it disappears. So they're thinking it's home run, walk off, game game over. Right. And next so the guy the guy's running the bases, he throws off his helmet, and next thing you know it has to just start sprinting to second because the ball starts flying through. And he nearly, nearly got out because he he thought the game was over and didn't didn't realize Would that have been the game though, if uh, he had gotten out? Well, it would have gone to extra innings because extra it was innings? two it was two oh, outs. Oh wow, and who knows? Yep. And then so he walks the next guy. And and then the last batter he has any uh, the last batter hits a pop fly and it goes way up in the air. And I tried to look at the stadium for uh, Stanford and but there was really no reason. I don't know where the sun was in the direction or whatnot, but these guys just lost the ball. They lost <laughs> the ball because they, the announcers were like, "All right, it's popped up into outfield." No one's spotting this. No <laughs> one is spotting this, and the ball just drops. And it was a clearly a, a pop fly, easy to catch. Just com- the guys, players lost it. Really? Yeah. And, and the, uh, sun, the sun ate that one up. Yeah. And the uh, and Stanford ended up winning the game. Wow. That's was, that, that's see. This is this is why college baseball is electric. Exactly. This is why it's fucking electric. That's why I love it. And it's it. You know what? Move over lacrosse. College baseball is the sport of the future. No, oh, yeah. Spoil the future. You got anything else in college baseball? Uh, that was it. All right, let's get to golf. So this is probably one of the most dramatic finishes for a golf tournament I think I've ever seen in my life. Did you watch the RBC Canadian Open? Let's put it this way. I saw highlights. You Okay, yeah. I think most, most people did. Like, nobody actually sat down and watched the entire four days except for Canadian. Canadians, yes. That's it. That's it. So congrats to Nick Taylor. This... This guy, <laughs> the fourth playoff hole, decides he's going to make a 72-foot putt. Like, I guess it was over 72 foot feet for an eagle to win the damn tournament. For the first time, a, Cam- a Canadian won the tournament since 1954. Mm-hmm. And also during a uh, the fourth round of a uh, playoff. Yes, yeah, the, the fourth playoff game, playoff hole. It was. Uh, I mean, there's nothing Tommy Fleetwood could have done. No, 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 absolutely not. Like, what, what else are you gonna do there? You, you, you can't. 
And, uh, like, it was just, it was electric. The crowd was going fucking nuts. I mean, was- especially when you got a hometown hero that wins it off of a putt like that. that I mean, you, yeah, you can't help yourself. Oh, it was beautiful. And, like, if, if you're a Canadian, you're just, you're, you're going fucking nuts right now. It's great. It's great. Um, I, <laughs> I think, <laughs> like, that, that was pretty cool and all, but I think my favorite fucking part of that tournament was... Adam Hadwin getting absolutely fucking truck sticked by a security guard because he the security guard thought that he was a spectator. Yes. Trying to rush the course. Well, if you'd notice he how the way he was celebrating, because, you know, obviously he's also Canadian as well. Right. So but the way he was celebrating I actually probably celebrated they probably celebrated harder for that than they did the Denver Nuggets for the NBA Finals. I agree. Yeah, yeah. they they were they were and and honestly, here's the thing: I I don't blame the security guard at all. I'm on the security guard side here because if you look at Adam Hadwin, he looks like every typical golf fan you will ever see. Well, he threw on the hoodie, so he did throw on the hoodie. And I mean, that's P- his fault. The PGA is very strict on their you know attire on their attire. Yes, their dress etiquette. Yes, the dress code is very strict. Yes. And they he did he violated that. So it, it, uh, again, I'm on the security guard's side. I mean, they look, I mean Happy Gilmore is just a movie. <laughs> that they is don't true. they don't allow that on the uh, on the tour. Right, exactly. Um uh, but yeah, it was it was probably it was I I think it was probably one of the wildest finishes just to, for the fact that it was the fourth playoff hole. Like they had gone through three different playoff holes, and and Nick Taylor was just like, you know, fuck this, I'm gonna sink this 72 foot putt. Yeah, and and it's over. Yeah, because I mean, honestly, if you saw the speed, the speed was there. And the oh, speed yeah. was it. It would have probably gone past it a little bit for sure. Um, so it was basically all or nothing. It's it, like I'm done with this. It's like you when you and I go play golf, you just don't. You never leave a birdie putt short. Yeah, because you and I, we don't get very many opportunities to putt for birdie. You don't leave that shit short. No. So it's either going into the hole or it's going off the green. Correct. Basically. Yeah. And you're tripping again. Exactly. For the fourth time. Yeah. Because we just suck at golf. <laughs> We're getting better. We're getting better. We'll work on it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll have to like film um, one of our rounds. Yeah. Exactly. I think that'll be uh, – apparently that's that's a popular thing on the internet now. Nowadays. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll, we'll, have to, we'll have to video one of our uh, – one of our rounds. Um, we got the U.S. Open uh, this weekend coming up. I'm really fucking excited about it. I can't wait. Uh, my only prediction for this is a live a live golfer is going to win. <laughs> that, that's your prediction? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm going to say, like, if you want, like, specifically to be able to bet, I'm going to say Dustin Johnson. Okay. It's probably not going to happen because Dustin hasn't been playing very well. But I'm going to pick a live player to, to win. Gotcha. So... But cool fact, this is going to be the first time it's going to be at Los Angeles Country Club. Oh, that's ever. that's cool. It'd be so, probably good, be good weather. Probably be good weather. Yeah. Do you? Know, I, I heard a theory that uh, John Rahm almost went to the live, and that was a huge reason that PGA started uh, like negotiating negotiating with, with the Saudis. Yeah. Like he, they heard John Rahm was going to go, and and then they were like, all right, well, we can't just keep having our top players go go especially with john rom winning the masters and then brooks kepka winning pga there you have two of the two of the majors that were played won by live players <laughs> this was just something i heard you know i just mm-hmm. thought i just throwing that out there i just that's what i heard so yep. it'd be interesting if that was true right uh you got anything else about golf uh, that's about it. All right, let's get to tennis. Tennis. Novak fucking Djokovic, baby. This is this 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 man is by far the best tennis player, and he should have broken this record. He's or she he should have beaten Nadal two years ago, but he got ousted and he got shunned by everyone because of his COVID vaccination status, which, as we know now, proves to be just nothing. It it, it doesn't fucking matter. Yep. Jesus. Um. He this he's he's the fucking goat. I had like all right, so I uh, I screenshotted his entire message. So at the end of the French Open, I was watching the I was watching the match. Um, the his opponent, I think his name is it's H U U D. It's Hood, I think. Hood. 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 He Hood. Uh, he had he 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 stood no chance. The guy was. He was defeated in in three sets. But what Djokovic said at the end, on the microphone, just live, he said, 
I would just like to send a message to every young person out there. Whatever you are pursuing, whether it's tennis, sports, or anything else, you know I was seven year I was a seven year old dreaming that I could win Wimbledon and become number one in the world one day. And I am beyond grateful and blessed to be standing here with so many incredible achievements. But one thing is for sure. I feel that I have the power to create my own destiny. I try to visualize every single thing in my life. Not only believe it, but really feel it with every cell in my person. Be in the present moment. Forget about what happened in the past. Future is something that is just going to happen. But if you want a better future, you create it. Take the means in your hands. Believe it. Create it. I, I wanted to run through a fucking brick wall after I heard that. I was ready to go. Like, I want to I conquer all of my goals now. Very fast, powerful message. Awesome. Awesome. It was great. Um, but yeah, so Novak Djokovic, one of the best. He's No, he's the best of all time. He's the GOAT. I will have to say, though, that uh, Serbia, top of the sports world right well, now. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're, they're, they're on a roll. They're Ser- on a roll. Serbia is on a roll. They, and they're, they're not very... Um, Let's see. Their names are, are they, they they don't they're very uh specific. They don't They're, they're all Vix. Yes. They're, they're all Vix. They're all Vix. It's not a they, they don't have a wide variety. Well, I feel like I'm convinced that if you're a guy and you live in in Serbia, you basically have to start off with like an N for your first name and like a Jokic or Joker Kitch. or Kitch. Vich. I mean Vich or Kitch. Well, it's definitely got to be Vich at the very end. Because yeah, yeah. I, honestly, if you actually look up a, a lot of the athletes, they're all Vich. Vich, yeah. Okay, so yeah, I think all, there was it, one person so that wasn't. It, it, it's like how if you're if you're Polish, your last name is going to end in ski. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Kowalski, Kowalski. Yep. yep. Yeah, that's that's Polish. Okay, so like that's just Serbian. Yes. So Nikola Djokovic, uh, Novak Djokovic, Nikola uh, Djokic, 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 Djokic. Yeah. Yeah, it's something. No, like there that. is Nikola Djokovic. It's very, it's very. Um, yeah, it's common. Yeah, and they all, they're all, they tall. all mesh together. They're all tall. Yeah, and they all love horses. And they all, lo- and they're the top of the game right now. Jo- uh, Djokovic is the top of basketball. Djokovic is on top of tennis. Boban is on top of sports uh, commercials. I mean, they're they're all there. <laughs> Boban is he's got the the goldfish commercials down. Yeah, he's he's got he, yeah. He's actually done a lot of commercials. Yes, it's good for him. All right, so yeah, good good job, Serbia. Good, good, well done. You got you you breed pretty good sports players. Um, anyways, anything else? That's about it. All right, let's go to talking soccer. Talking soccer, eh? Hey, talking soccer. Talking soccer. Man City, congratulations, Man City. They won the UEFA Champions League with a one one nil win, almost at zero one nil win over Inter Milan. I'm surprised that it wasn't by more. If I'm being honest, Man City, I, you could have done better. I will say this, though. They did win the treble. The what? The treble. What the fuck is that? So the treble is winning three trophies. And it doesn't matter, like, which events, but you win three trophies in a year. Three trophies in a year. In the season. So they won the Premier League, the FA Cup, and the U- uh, UAE, the UEFA? UEFA Champions League. Well, they're a cheat code. Fuck them. So, Fuck yeah. Man City. Uh, Bayern Munich did it back in 2019. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, they were really good. Back they then. were good. So, um, but yeah, it's basically you win three trophies. I mean, it could be the World Cup, um, which I was very surprised about that because those are countries rather than actual clubs. So I did that. It makes sense, but that doesn't make any sense. Uh, if you win more, get this. Now, if you win more than three, it's called a sex tuple. <laughs> what? A sex tuple. That sounds like a, a porno. I mean, it's some, it sounds like some orgasm, you know. A sex tuple? Sex tuple. All right, it sounds like a bunch of just babies born, born at one time. Yeah, that's that's probably be, the milder it, it could, version of yeah, that. It could be either an orgy or a uh, just a bunch of babies born at one time. So, yeah, fun fact. Talking uh-huh. soccer. Talking soccer, eh? Talking soccer. Um, so, uh, the, I guess the, the only goal was scored by Rodri in... The 68th minute, I, f- I, w- I was hoping it was De Bruyne. De Bruyne. <laughs> De Bruyne. Um, so, yeah, congratulations, Man City. Let's get to the most important soccer news. Okay. The most important soccer news, um, Lionel Messi. Lionel Messi to enter Mi- Miami. 
Inter Miami. Inter Miami. I like how you were about to say Inter Milan, but it, yeah, yeah, I almost said almost said Inter Milan. Yeah, no, Inter Miami. So my Lionel Messi to Miami. Very interesting, considering he turned down over a billion dollars of Saudi Arabian money. Mm-hmm. Over a billion dollars. Now, I th- when I first saw that, I was like, all right, he's a fucking idiot. Um, but then I thought about it, and I looked into it, and I read about it. He's got a lot of fucking money. He's got a lot of money, got a lot of power, got a lot of everything. In the future, it is actually more lucrative to sign with Miami than it would be the Saudi Arabians. Okay. So what I learned is in his contract, not only does he get his millions of dollars, Mm -hmm. but he gets a percentage of the entire revenue of the entire team. So not just not just like ratings, not just like ticket sales. I'm talking everything. Okay. Like food sales, like drink sales. Just he so gets this, a percentage of the entire revenue of the team. So I'm I'm assuming I'm not sure if it's a general manager or the club manager, or whoever works out the contracts. They they work some angles. Yes. Okay. They work so, some angles well, in no, this contract. This isn't this isn't the only time this has happened. They did it with um. Oh, who did they do it with? This is, no, David Beckham. They did it with David Beckham, and I think they did it with Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Okay. So, like, not only do you get a percentage of the entire revenue of the of the the team itself, you also are guaranteed a chance to buy an MLS soccer team in the future. Hmm. So, like, when he retires and everything, you are guaranteed an opportunity to buy an MLS soccer team. Interesting. So, not only do you make make money now you have money for the future and then that'll just set up more more golden opportunities it sounds like a typical u.s retirement plan correct correct yeah classic classic um but yeah no if you look i don't know the exact numbers but go look up the ticket sales for in miami since uh messi decided to go there Shut up! I think a thousand percent. Oh, I'm, that, that, I'm, I'm surprised it's not more. I'm, uh, yeah, exactly. I was about to say I'm not exaggerating. Yeah, like, uh, shut up a thousand percent, and it's probably more now. Yeah, it's insane. And he, I mean, he's a he's a global phenomenon. So, and he's the best player of all time. Uh, no offense, no no disrespect to you know any of the other past players. Yes, disrespect to Cristiano Ronaldo. <laughs> that motherfucker was just fucking cherry picking. I will say though, I'm, I'm glad you gave that explanation because my initial thought was, you know, the live golf lesson. Yes, like <laughs> take the money. Yep, that's it, it, it. Like I said, yeah, I thought I thought Messi was a giant idiot. Yeah, because honestly, if you look, there's. I mean, it's not only Messi that got offered that deal, but there's a, quite a bit of other soccer players. Cristiano Ronaldo. Ronaldo's over there. Uh, ben, uh, Benzema. 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 Yep. Just got a huge deal. The Saudis are throwing money. They well, as we saw with the live with the live live golf, all they want is they they want to be the financier of these these fucking leagues. They want to be the basically the puppet master. They want to be the ones pulling the strings mm-hmm. and. They're going to be able to weasel their way into it because, like we said last last episode, money talks. talks. Follow the money. You will always get the truth. Money talks. You just – just you have to accept it. You can fight it all you want, but it's just – you're going – it's a losing battle for you. So, yeah, basically we're just waiting until we get bought out by the Saudis, our podcast. Yeah. Well, I mean if the – okay, Joe. If the Saudis offered us – you know, I'll go small compared to the Saudi. It's Saudi, Saudi's offered us ten million dollars each. Tell me you wouldn't take it. I, you know what? I, yeah, I, I'm I'm heading to Dubai. I can I can be well. Dubai is in the United Emirates, but totally, totally know my geography. Yeah, no, it's 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 cool. But like, yeah, if if they offer me ten, I can definitely be bought. I'll I'll admit that. I, I like ten million dollars. Yeah, there's a lot of things I would do for ten million dollars. There's a lot of things I wouldn't do for ten million. Well, there, there's not a lot of things I wouldn't do, do for, for 10, ten million dollars. Ten million dollars, yes. Yeah. You get my point. Yeah. So, anyways, Saudis, you wanna you wanna um, throw some money our way? We'll uh, we'll we'll talk. We'll talk shop. We'll talk. We'll we'll have our people call your people. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Good. Uh, anything else on talking soccer? Eh, talking soccer. Anything else? That's it. All right. Uh, last bit of news. 
<laughs> the in the NFL, the Cleveland Browns have changed their logo. Mm-hmm. Not their mascot, their logo. Um, have you seen it? I have seen it. It's too no. It's too. I, for lack of better words, it's too new looking. It's too modern. I want like when I think of the Cleveland Browns, I think of the classic look, the classic bulldog. This one's too new. I don't like it. Well, I will say this. I have to give them props. Okay. Because they did put a lot of symbolism and um, and different things into it. I don't know if you noticed it or not. Mm-hmm. So I saw a breakdown. There's actually a little, uh, a little small figure, kind of a little slanted of the state of Ohio into it. Ooh. They also have like a sta- uh, figure of a mon, um, a monument in um, in Cleveland. Is, yeah, in Cleveland, carved out on the stone or uh, off the nose, not the stone. And then on the tag, they have like something like a, a imprint of the South End Zone. There's a breakdown on the internet circling around of like all the different symbolism. So I had to give them credit. I was like, I was like, all right, that's you know, hey, they put a lot of thought and, and artistic ability into it. I can't hate it. You know, okay. they they gave they made it a you know put enough effort into it where I can't hate it. I mean, I don't have to like it either though, but. I can't hate it. You got so you respect it. I respect it. You respect it. Okay, and that's fine. I kind of I, I like now that you tell me that I, I do kind of low key respect. I, I still don't like it, but I do kind of low key respect it. Like that's yeah. that's fine. Any type of like subliminal messaging, I kind of respect. Like especially from like from major companies. Like if you're able to like just infiltrate my brain via your subliminal messaging. Kudos to you. Well done. You actually, that means you actually did a lot of research and you did a lot of fucking art. Honestly, you got to be a pretty good art artist too. Like you have to have an imagination and everything to just be able to infiltrate my brain. Yes. Actually, it doesn't take very much, but you're infiltrating a lot of people that are much smarter than me's brain. Yes, exactly. So yeah, that I did. I needed to get, uh, there it is. Yeah. See, I, it's just too much for me. I guess uh, like I don't I don't I want those the simple. Oh, I see. You see the breakdown. There's a football on the nose. There's the Ohio uh, the state of Ohio breaking down right there. Their helmet stripe on the front. So they like, they actually it's put a little bit of a stretch. I mean it is, but you know, the Guardian Bridge yeah, right in the middle on the nose. But I mean they threw like they have some symbolism to it. That's why I can't hate it. Okay. I can't hate it. I it's, don't I don't have to like it, it's but a, I, I can't hate it. It is a little bit of a stretch. Yes. Those are a little bit of a stretch, but there's a guitar pick. I think that's for the whole uh Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, Rock. Well, that's yeah, it, Oh, that is in Cleveland, huh? That's a, or uh, it's in Ohio. It's in Ohio, yeah. Uh what is it? Uh, Canton? Canton? No. No, that's that's, the, a that's pro the Hall of NFL. Fame. Um no, I think it is in Ohio actually. Yeah, it is. It is. I can't remember where it is, but I think it it might be actually be in Cleveland. I really do think it's in Cleveland. Well, because they had the commercials with Baker Mayfield. Yeah, yeah, they, it is, it is. Okay, cool. We figured it out. Great. Um, yeah. Anything. Anyways, you got anything else? Uh, that's about it. Alrighty, I think we'll do an episode next week, just because there's gonna be. Let's see. Actually, we'll <laughs> hang on one second. We'll uh, we'll give, give you me. some live updates on the on the hockey. Yeah. Oh wow. Oh shit. Um. Yeah. No. So, I could have told you they won. So <laughs> Vegas Golden Knights. One, beat Florida Florida Panthers nine to three tonight. Oh wow. Nine to three. They wanted that. Yeah. They wanted that. So they, they wanted it in Vegas. But they follow the same script. So somebody the NHL or the NBA plagiarized one another because yep. it went into five. It's it's a, a tough look for, for South Florida right now. Yes. They lost two major majors sports. Yeah, events in yeah yeah the words uh <laughs> two major sporting events in two days tough break it's rough rough mm. um yeah so uh we i i think we probably should yeah we'll we'll have one other one more episode next week because we'll break down college baseball and we'll do some some golf and uh we'll see whatever what else happens with the nba uh free agency we'll do some john morant do some John Morant. John Morant news. Yep. So yeah, we'll have we'll we'll have at least one more episode um, before we take a break. So yeah, tune in next week. Love y'all. Later.